And so one of the things we want to do with our young players is like really help them understand that why you got to go out there and put the points up at the same time, you got to make sure mentally you're strong because a lot of stuff is going to happen in life and you got to make sure when you get hit, you have the ability to get back up real quick. I want to make sure when I say motivation, I'm actually talking about mental health. Yeah. When I talk about motivation, I'm actually talking about yeah, again, when I talk about motivation, I'm actually talking about yeah, one more time. When I talk about motivation, I'm actually talking about and how many of us, like, for real, I know we hit the gym in the morning. I know we do that. I know we work out, we, we, we work on our games, but just being real, how many of us spend as much time on our mental health, motivation, like the ability to say, my favorite quote, never let a good crisis go to waste. My son, can you, son, can you quickly, can you give me, Candace got the book, can you let, let me see the book real quick. So, so mental health is, we are in a recession, right? That's mental health, we're in a recession. Like, we lo like as a speaker, I don't know if y'all know what this means, but as a speaker, they said something about social distancing. Rock my whole career. That's all I do, thank you, son. That's all I do is speak. So in 2019, when we entered 2020, they really said my whole job was gone, right? I, I, I'm accustomed to being in the locker room or being on the field. Or, or being at a stadium, or being out of the country, talking to 10,000, 5,000, my whole job was gone. So, so what does mental health look like? It looked like, instead of me saying, man, I done lost my whole job. Like, I, I'm, I'm used to making, at that time, $50,000 a pop. Like, ain't nobody paying that for no Zoom. I, my mental health was, E, relax, E, count your blessings, E, like, E, look within and see, what, what can you do, even though they've taken your main source of income, what could you do? And so for those two years, I wrote a book. I got a publishing deal, right? I wrote a book, right? They came to me, hey, we're gonna pay you this month. I said, I'm good, I want, I want a greater percentage. Like, I'm betting on ET. Like, flat out, I'm good. You ain't gotta give me no nothing up front. I don't need no royalty, I don't need nothing. I just need a greater percentage because I believe I'm gonna sell a million books. So during the recession, my mental health was like, Yo, they've taken the one thing that you know, the one thing that you good at, they've taken that away from you. I thought it was gonna be six weeks, then it was six months, then it was a year, then it was 12, uh, uh, 14 months, 16 months, it was 18 months before I got back on the road again. Right, motivation is mental, yeah, come on, motivation is mental, good. Motivation is mental, and we gotta work on that. So being honest, how many of you in the room, you spend as much time on your mental health as you do in the gym, or as you do playing basketball. Let me see your hand, right? And it's cool, whatever, but I'm just saying, I got a kid who is dying of cancer. Die, he knows he's going to die. His, he's, he's swollen, the stuff is coming out, but every day when I see him, every day when I talk to this kid, he's still like, E.T., I have nothing but positive things to say. That's because physically he was handicapped, but mentally he was strong. And so we gotta work on our mental. And I learned very young from parents, from my parents, absolutely, that you, you don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I want to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say, I'm going to lay this brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid. There will not be one brick on the face of the earth that's going to be laid better than this brick that I'm going to lay in this next 10 minutes. Yeah. And you do that every single day. And soon you have a and wall. And soon you have a wall. Yeah. And I think psychologically, the advantage that that, that gives me over, over a lot of people that I um, have been in competition with in different situations is it's difficult to take the first step when you look how big yeah, exactly. the, the task is. The task is never huge to me. It's always yeah, me one too. brick. Me too. Greatness is not this uh, wonderful, esoteric, elusive, uh, godlike feature that only the special among us are, will ever taste. You know, it's something that truly exists in all of us. It's very simple. This is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it. Period. It's that simple. I know who I am, and I know what I believe. I know who I am, I know who, what I believe. And that's all I need to know. And that's all I need, I need to, to know. know. So from there, you do what you need to do. Yeah.
you know. And I think what happens is we make this situation more complex than it has to because be. Because we're looking for complexity. There's got to be Absolutely. something complex to understand. It right? can't be that easy. I hate Plan B because we have so many doubters, as I've said earlier, the, the no-sayers. We have so many of those people that say no and you can't do it, it's impossible. That is okay because we just turn off, as I said earlier, and we listen and we hear the no being a yes, you can't do it, do it, you can't do it, and all that. So that, that is possible to do that amongst all the negative people around you. But when you start doubting yourself, that's very dangerous. Because now what you're basically saying is, is that if my plan doesn't work, I have a fallback plan. I have a plan B. And that means that you start thinking about plan B and every thought that you put into plan B, you're taking away now that thought and that energy from plan A. It is very important to understand that we function better if there is no safety net because plan B becomes a safety net. It says that if I fail, then I fall and I get picked up and I have something else there that, is, that will protect me. And that's not good because people perform better when there's no safety net. People perform better in sports and everything else if you don't have a plan B. I'm telling you, I've never ever had a plan B. I say I made a full commitment that I'm gonna go be a bodybuilding champion. I made a full commitment that I'm gonna be in America. I made a full commitment that I'm gonna get into the show business and I'm going to be a leading man. No matter what it takes, I will do the work. I will do the work over and over and over until I get it. And, and for me, just coming from where I come from, bro, and like just understanding that, man, I'm built different, period. I'm just built different, man. And I, I've always had an eye, a, a, a discipline and a work ethic that I've had at a young age that I just kind of, I just apply it to everything that I that I want to do. Mm. So so I, I would say that, you know, I rarely go out, you know, reading, you know what I'm saying, trying to reverse engineer how to be successful, like how do I, you know, start my own production company, how do I do this, how do I do that, and I always felt like if other cats was out partying and I was home studying, I would have an edge, Yes, you know what I'm saying, if cats was out here doing this and that, being hung over the night before, I would have an edge if I wasn't, if I'm eating food, I'll save the best for last, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, I'll eat around it to the one part that I really want, I don't eat, I'm, I'm gonna save that, I'm like, a, I'm a delayed, you know what I'm saying, gratification, I'm that type of person, so like, I'm literally like, alright, I will party later. I work hard now, so the second half of my life, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Mm. That's the best. here because of 4 a.m. We're up here because of two a days or five a days. We're up here because we had a dream and let nothing stand in our way. If anything tried to bring us down, we used it to make us strong. We were never satisfied, never finished, will never be retired. My high school English teacher, Mr. Fisk, I actually paid attention one time in class. And, and he said, he had this beautiful quote, and, he, and it read, rest at the end, not in the middle. And I took that to heart. I believe there's time for resting at the end, but for me, that time is not now. Thank you for this tremendous honor and acknowledging my basketball career, but I'm far from done. My next dream is to be honored one day for inspiring the next generation of athletes to have a dream, sacrifice for it, and never ever rest in the middle.